How's it going everyone? This is Nick. I'm back here with another ReVenture YouTube cast and today I'm really excited. I'm going to show you guys how to use data to figure out whether your city is in a housing bubble or not. This is a really important episode for you guys to watch, particularly if you're thinking of buying a home or an investment property, because you want to make sure you're not buying into a market that's on the precipice of a housing collapse. That would be very bad. You'd be paying top dollar only to see the market go down in the next couple of years. You don't want that. Buying a home, buying a real estate investment property, those are the biggest financial decisions that most people are ever going to make. So if you make them, you want to make sure you have data on your side. And in today's episode, I'm going to show you guys how to use two simple data points that you can get from Zillow and the Bureau of Labor Statistics to figure out whether your market is in a housing bubble. All right. Without further ado, let's get into it. So the real driver of home prices in the long run is income levels in the local economy. The more money and income people are making, the more home prices will go up in the long run. And uh, this happens for two reasons. The first is when people make more money, they often have more savings to afford a down payment and that increases home prices. The second reason is banks will often loan more money to people who have higher incomes, right? Because they feel more secure in getting paid back. So if you're loaning more money to people who have higher incomes and they have more money to afford higher down payments, well, that's gonna juice home prices in a given market. So we need to compare the relationship of home value on one end to income levels on the other end. And uh, I call this value to income ratio. And this metric over uh, you know, the last 15, 20 years has been very predictive of how, uh, how uh, home prices change over time. So if you go back to 2007, the markets with the highest value to income ratio, that is values way above incomes, those markets had the biggest decline. They had the biggest decline. Some even lost like 30, 40, 50% of value over the next four years. Meanwhile, the markets where value to income ratio was lower, where they were much closer, they didn't really get hit that hard. And you can see what I'm talking about on this graph. And what we're comparing here is the change in home prices in uh, each market from 2007 to 2011. So you can see immediately almost every market had a, a big decline in home prices during that time. And we're comparing the decline in home prices to what the value to income ratio was in 2007 in that market. And the first thing that pops off the page uh, is the, the relationship between the two. The higher the value to income ratio was in 07, the more prices declined in the market. And just why don't we pick an example here to get started. Miami. So back in 07, Miami's typical home price was 334,000. Annual income for the average worker was 38,000. That's an 8.8 .8 value to income ratio. What happened in Miami over the next four years? Well, home prices fell to 166,000. That was a 50% decline. Homeowners in Miami lost 50% of their value from 2007 to 2011. Many got wiped out. And one of the reasons they did is because in 07, values were extremely high relative to incomes at 8.8 .8 value to income ratio. If you guys are enjoying the data presented in this video, please hit subscribe down below. Please also like and comment on the video. I love making this, these videos. I love sharing this data with you guys. It just makes it easier for me to do that if you can interact with the video. So like it, comment, and make sure to subscribe. All right, let's get back to the video. Let's compare that to a market like Oklahoma City. Back in 07, Oklahoma City's typical home value was 124000 and the average annual income for each worker was 34000 that's a 3.6 value to income ratio. What happened in Oklahoma City over the next four years? Values actually went up. That's right, values in Oklahoma City went up during the biggest financial housing crash of all time from 2007 to 2011. This shows you the power of value to income ratio in predicting the resiliency of markets during a housing downturn. And you can see I've kind of cordoned this graph off two different sides. In the green here, we have the safe zone. That's where the value to income ratio is below six to one. 
And what you can immediately see is that in the safe zone, basically every market was above um, negative 20%. You know, negative 20% is a lot. We can see Memphis lost 19%, Grand Rapids lost 18%, Milwaukee lost 18%. But because they were in the safe zone, the losses were not devastating. And then you, you can even see up here, some markets were flat or even gained value in the safe zone. When we go into the danger zone in orange at a value to income of over six to one, well, we see uh, lots of really bad things. Basically, all the big declines occurred in markets that were in the danger zone where value to incomes were above six to one. You know, we just talked about Miami. How about Bakersfield, California? Values went down by 53%. Orlando, values went down by 50%. Phoenix, values went down by 50%. Sacramento, values went down by 43%. And the key reason values went down by so much in these markets is because value to income ratio was so high to begin with. So you have significantly more security in your real estate market when value to income ratios are low. When they're three to one, when they're four to one, when they're five to one, there is much less room for values to decline when things go bad. When value to income ratios are seven to one, eight to one, nine to one, you're setting yourself up for real pain whenever the housing market corrects. Real estate investors back in 2007 who followed a value to income ratio investment uh, philosophy would have done very well compared to ones that chased the growth, chased the appreciation in markets like Phoenix, Miami, and Orlando. Those are the ones who got hit the hardest and lost everything. So we can use value to income ratio right now in 2021 to see which markets, which cities are in housing bubbles and which ones home buyers and real estate investors need to avoid. Conversely, we can also use value to income to look at which markets are secure, the ones that home buyers and real estate investors should feel confident buying into in 2021. So what we're looking at on this graph is four different cities. In orange, we have Salt Lake City and Austin. In green, we have Cincinnati and Oklahoma City. And Austin and Salt Lake, the two orange lines, these are markets that have high value to income ratios. You can see today Salt Lake City is at 85 value to income ratio, typical value of 431 compared to an average annual income of 51,000. That's 8.5 value to income. That is very high and it is growing fast. As you can see, this line is increasing significantly over the last three years. Austin is in a similar situation where value to income is now up to 7.2, typical value of 379,000 compared to annual income of 53,000 at 7.2. What you can see from this graph is that Salt Lake and Austin are currently in the danger zone. Their value to income ratios are well above six to one, which uh, is concerning if you're a home buyer or real estate investor in these markets. It means that if you're buying right now, you're buying at an elevated price. Now, it wasn't always this way. If we go back to say 2012, we can see Austin's value to income ratio is 4.6, Salt Lake City's was 4.9. Those cities were great buys back then. And this just goes to show the cyclical nature of real estate. It's not as if one market is always a good market or another market is always a bad market. Things change over time. Dynamics and fundamentals shift. Back in around 2010 to 2014, 2015, Salt Lake and Austin were great markets to buy into. Now they are not. You want to sell out of Salt Lake and Austin. You want to avoid buying in Austin right now. Compare that to Cincinnati and Oklahoma City, the green lines. Value to income of 4.3 in Cincinnati and 3.8 in Oklahoma City. Much lower value to income ratio, much more stability because of that. And you can see the value to incomes over time have stayed relatively stable, meaning that home prices and incomes have gone up more or less at the same rate. That means it's a healthy real estate market and real estate economy. Remember, Oklahoma City was one of those markets that actually saw appreciation between 2007 and 2011, when every other market for the most part was going through the worst housing crisis literally in US history, Oklahoma City actually grew values. How did it grow values? Well, back in 07, its value to income ratio was 3.6. It was very reasonable. It was a very stable and secure market. Today, value to income is 3.8. It's still stable. It's still secure. It's still a good market to buy in in 2021. Same goes for Cincinnati. And it's just really important that you wrap your head around this concept because if you're in a market like Austin or Salt Lake, markets like Boise and Reno are also similar. 
people in these markets, whether they be brokers or owners or realtors, they're going to try their hardest to convince you that now is a great time to buy. They're going to say that the run up in values is justified because of um, all the growth that's occurring. Don't buy the bullshit. Look at the relationship of values to incomes over time. That's going to tell you most of what you need to know about whether now is a good time to buy in the market that you're looking at. So how do you find this data? Data on values can be found on Zillow. If you go to Zillow's data page, which I'm going to include a link to in the description, you'll find historical real estate values by month across different cities and markets across the US. You can download that data in Excel and analyze it for yourself. Now, in terms of income, uh, you can download that data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. I'll have a link to that also in the description. And basically what you'll need to do is download data on the average hourly wage as well as weekly hours worked and then multiply those together to get weekly and annual earnings. Once you have that, divide the value by the annual earnings and income, and there you go. You have value to income ratio and you can calculate it for any market in the US and increase uh, your investment decision capabilities if you're deciding to buy a home or buy an investment property. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I love making these videos. It makes it easier for me to produce this content and share this data with you if you can like, comment, and subscribe, interact with the video, leave me your feedback. That gives me more ideas for future videos. It just makes it much easier and much better for me to produce content. So again, please like, comment, and subscribe to the video, and then stay tuned. While value to income ratio is really important, there is an additional data point that you need to look out for um, that's related to how much permitting and supply is being built in these markets, how many new homes are being built. So stay tuned for a follow-up video in the next week or so that covers that and how you can find data on permitting and supply to see if your market is in a housing bubble. Until next time, this is Nick from ReVenture Consulting signing off. Oh.